Hare Krishna World Razor, Sabina and Roger here. Let's watch Swami Govinda, Dev Giri, Treasurer, Ram, Jana, Bhumi, and Sadguru on the Gita. Yeah. So we have no idea who this Swami Govind is. Maybe you can let us know. Mm -hmm. um, but we know Sadguru and we're studying the Gita, so. Join us and hit the like button, please remember, and subscribe if you aren't. So we just finished watching <sighs> this video, and I have to tell you right now, from the bottom of my heart, in all honesty, that I do believe that this is my favorite <laughs> Satguru talk that I have ever listened to. And if you know our channel at all, you know that we've watched quite a bit of Satguru. So please, please, please watch this whole video with us. Namaskaram. Namaskaram. Govind Dev Ji. Mm. Namaskaram. Ji Namaskaram. Wonderful mm. to be talking to you. Sweet. Namaskaram. Really speaking, mm. I am so much excited today oh. that a world teacher like our Sadhguru Ji no, no. has <laughs> accepted to guide us and that too on a very short notice, mm. I apologize that I should have requested much earlier, but it's your grace only that you accepted it. I bow before you mm. my when you're, when hundreds you're, and hundreds pranams for you. Oh. When you're continuing Krishna's work, how can I say no to you? Oh. <laughs> wow. so. It's the grace <laughs> that you are showering upon us. Mm. So sweet. Today, Hmm. As Bhagavad Gita has said, that the different paths are for the prashnena sevaya, for the action to take nanam, nanas tatva darshina. Those great seers guide you only when you offer your pranams at their lotus feet and ask some questions. Hmm. We, for the last six months, during this COVID period, are working. Really speaking, we have been working for 36 years for this cause, but it was never online. But this COVID has compelled us mm -hmm. to come online. Mm -hmm. And it has turned like a miracle. Mm -hmm. We reached mm -hmm. around 80 countries and more than 1 lakh Kids, hmm. almost kids, some parents have learned by heart two chapters from Bhagavad Gita. Wow. <laughs> awesome. This is being done by selfless workers who are not paid at all. Hmm. They are all only honorary workers. They are Krishna Bhaktas, they are the Karikartas only. And we are doing this through 11 languages and uh, Today, it's grace of God that we have found a world teacher like you mm. to guide us. Mm. In the beginning, I want to ask one thing. From the beginning, we have emphasized upon one thing, that we may read Gita from any language, mm. from any translation, <laughs> but yeah. when chanting, we should emphasize only on the Sanskrit text uh -huh. because they are the words that have come from the lotus mouth of Bhagavan mm -hmm. Krishna and therefore they are like mantras. Oh, and yeah. therefore, all this Gita teaching is done through Sanskrit text only mm -hmm. as far as the chanting is concerned. Mm -hmm. For explanation, we use all the languages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With folding hands, I am oh. asking a question. So sweet. Are we right mm -hmm. in giving that emphasize, emphasis on the Sanskrit original oh. Gita text? Great question. That should be clarified by you. Hmm. Your clarification shall be a great guidance for us. Oh, he's wow. so sweet. So sweet. See, at a time like this, mm. as you said, uh, there has been a pandemic. Mm. Oh. And uh, second wave, third wave is coming in many countries and the UN agencies are predicting a mental health pandemic, a suicide pandemic. 
My massive number of uh, people are committing suicide. Uh, for example, in the year 2020, in Japan, more people committed suicide than they died of COVID hmm. uh, infections. So when human beings are going through this kind of strife within themselves, there is a challenging situation around us, but when they are going through a strife like this within themselves, I, in my humble opinion, I don't think we should limit the power and the wisdom of Gita from reaching people simply because of our love for our languages. <laughs> we may have much love for the language, totally. and there is a science behind the utterance of Sanskrit language… Sanskrit language, there's no question about it, but I think the understanding, the wisdom and the knowledge of Gita should go to people hmm. first. Chanting, because chanting hmm. is like converting people culturally into our way of life. Hmm. I do not think we should impose that. Those who are willing, we should encourage them definitely hmm. towards that. Hmm. But we should not make that compulsory because it's very, very important this knowledge goes. Why I'm saying this is… Hmm. See, there are many kinds of belief systems, Lovely. philosophies in the world. But in my opinion, I clearly see this, that for the next generation of people, this… in India, our way of looking at things is we look at the divine as an empowerment for us, so that we heighten ourselves and function at a higher level. Mm -hmm. The most important aspect of Krishna's teaching, I am not a… see, I myself cannot read or uh, speak Sanskrit, I am an ignorant person <laughs> uh, in front of you, you are all uh, scholars. Mm. So, <laughs> I would be restricted by this. So, in uh -huh. my opinion, mm. for me, the most significant aspect of Gita is the Vishwarupa Darshana that Krishna uh, bestows on Arjuna. Uh, whatever he spoke, how much ever wisdom was there, Still, Arjuna went on asking questions because this is the nature of human mind, it will go on <laughs> investing mm -hmm. in more doubts and more… picking more and more loopholes somewhere. Mm -hmm. But the moment he shows him who he is in terms of his inclusiveness, mm -hmm. how the whole existence is a part of himself, mm -hmm. and he is showing this because he also wants to convey to Arjuna and everybody in the world that this is your nature also if you are willing, if you open up, your… Uh, mm. the dimension of your existence, you could experience everything as yourself. Mm. Uh, for me, that is the only thing that's been my guiding post, that ultimately the word yoga means union. For me, the ultimate expression of yoga is Krishna. Wow. Because he displayed it, the most crucial aspect of entire teaching is that, that he is able to show Arjuna that all… the entire universe, irrespective of plants, animals, mm. this, that, planets, everything is a part of me, because this is the nature of human consciousness. This rising of human consciousness mm. or raising of human consciousness is very, very important <laughs> yes. because morals, values, ethics all stand by us when things are going well. Mm. When there is crisis or when there is mortality hanging in, our, in front of our face, the only and only thing which takes us beyond that is re you know, is really human consciousness, mm -hmm. which is all-inclusive, and this is what Krishna represents for me. So, nice. in that sense, this must reach maximum number of people. Mm -hmm. Anything that impedes this reach must be taken away. Mm -hmm. As you said, yeah. this online thing has been a miracle that what you cannot do physically, <laughs> suddenly now, why if you could reach ten people physically, now you're reaching thousand people mm -hmm. online. But this can be multiplied in such a way, if you translate this into thirty different languages in the world, mm. uh, you can reach billions of people and that is more important for me than sticking to the language. It has… language has its power, language has its significance, but above all, people understanding there is a universal way to exist mm. is more important for me than the language. Well said. Hare Krishna. Wow. We shall certainly follow. Mm this advice mm -hmm. and shall try to reach at most people. Can I ask one more question? Yes, sir. Today, we want to know what can be the essential message for global youth 
from Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. Yeah. If we want to look at something as a message, I think the most significant message of not just Gita, Krishna's life as a whole hmm. is... See, in many ways his life is full of strife. There are so many wars, there are fights, there are people who are extreme uh, levels of, uh, you know, evil intentions and actions. Mm -hmm. So his life in many ways is full of strife and challenges. Our pandemic challenge is nothing <laughs> compared to the challenges that he faced in his life. Mm -hmm. So even though all others, the Pandavas, the Kauravas and various other parties who are involved in this drama, they all suffered immensely either because of anger or hatred or anguish or shame, many things happening to everybody. But Krishna was one person who went through this entire serious drama, very uh, virulent drama if you ask me, and a terrible war and everything, with a big smile on his face, mm -hmm. playfully. Mm -hmm. So the most significant aspect of life is to be involved, to be absolutely involved, at no point did he show that I am not involved at every point, in every small thing and big things, trivial things and significant things. In everything he is involved absolutely, but absolutely playful, unentangled, involved but not entangled. I think this is the most important thing that needs to happen to human beings, particularly the next generation of youth. Yes. They must understand Involvement does not mean entanglement. Mm -hmm. You can be absolutely, totally involved in everything in your life, but unentangled. I… in my mm. understanding, in my experience of life, I think that is the most significant aspect of Krishna and his teaching <sighs> because to go through life playfully, mm. yeah. to carry life, the most serious aspects mm. of life lightly in your life, because after all, we are here for a brief amount of time. We are not permanent dwellers here, yes. we are mortal human beings. Today we are there, tomorrow we'll be gone. We need to learn to handle this life lightly, then we will do appropriate things. The moment we get serious about everything, then we become sick. Mm. See, at least in India, the way we speak English language, if somebody says, my grandmother is serious, we understand that she is dying. Hmm. So, if mm -hmm. people have become serious, they must understand they are moving away from life towards death. I think most important mm -hmm. aspect of Krishna's message is, it's life, life and life. Hmm. <laughs> wow. While listening yes. to this uh, uh. reply, I just remembered that our Sadhguru Maharaj is himself an example of this. <laughs> <laughs> I had always got great respect for Sadhguruji, but it reached its ultimate height when I came to know that he has started the movement for the freedom of Hindu temples in Tamil Nadu. Today, he is uh, involved in the whole movement. We assure that we are all with you and we start, we, we desire to start the movement for the whole of India. But at this point, what I remember is, Sadhguruji is involved but not entangled in the movement <laughs> and therefore he is just setting an example before us, in front of us for, for how to live the life. It's a very great message for the global youth. <laughs> uh, this is a very important thing because, yes. see the basic infrastructure in this country which kept the Hindu, of, Hindu way of life alive because Hindu way of life is not run by one head somewhere, there is no one belief system, there is no one book, there is no one principle. Everything is entertained and everything is respected and regarded. The variety of uh, spiritual processes, all of, it's, all of it has been respected. Karma, Jnana, Kriya, uh, bhakti, everything on the same platform, we are not separating those two as one superior to the other. But at different times, maybe different things become significant in human evolution. Mm. At different times of history and time, certain things become more dominant than the other, that's a different matter. But we have not ever thought 
this path is superior to that, that path is superior to this. Mm -hmm. So in this context, temple infrastructure was the main infrastructure where nobody ever led a prayer or a teaching, but people went there to imbibe that energy. Mm -hmm. We go to a temple not to pray, but to have darshan. We want to see, mm -hmm. we want to see and uh, you know, imprint that huh. divine image within our hearts and come out. We are not going there to pray. We are not going there to pray, petition God. He need not talk to us, he is silent. But we want to take his image into our hearts. Mm -hmm. This is the nature of the Hindu temple. Mm -hmm. But now, to keep this as a vibrant image, the murti, to keep it alive, there are many processes. When these processes are run by people, who are not involved, who are just government employees. Mm. Mm. Well, these processes are all dying. As the government has admitted over twelve thousand temples, there is no puja happening, even one puja is not happening. Thirty-seven thousand temples, their income is less than ten thousand rupees per year. Wow. And thirty-four temples, thirty-four thousand temples, there is only one person in the temple doing puja, maintenance, mm -hmm. security, everything mm. one person, wow. and he is paid fifteen hundred rupees. Mm. 30 rupees per day, uh, something like that. Mm. So, when this is the condition, I feel devotees must take into charge, but with yeah. this everybody needs to come together. Mm. I am seeing that I am receiving a lot of abuse now myself and they are not even sparing my mother, they are abusing everything. Mm. And unfortunately, oh what I see is very strong devotees, genuine devotees are also misguided by certain uh, vested interests and there's a lot of reaction. It is very important that we present ourselves with a single face, mm -hmm. not one against the other, yes. because this has cost us enormously in the past. Mm -hmm. Enormously in the past, through the invasions, through occupations, we have paid a huge price, at least in free India. We mm -hmm. are going to complete seventy-five years of independence. Mm -hmm. It is time we come together as one force. <laughs> yes. It is not necessary. We are not made like this in the Hindu way of life. You have to agree with me, I have to agree with you, not necessary. No. There may be there are many things I don't agree with you, many things you don't agree with me. Hmm. This is perfectly fine. We need to understand Krishna's life is an example. Though he is standing there as a divine embodiment, hmm. still Arjuna can ask him a hundred questions. He is not telling him, just shut up and listen to me. He is answering every question, all right? <laughs> so this is the nature of our culture, <laughs> it is not necessary, we have to agree with each other. Mm. But still we must understand, the fundamental purpose is same. Mm -hmm. So we should not go in divergent ways, which unfortunately is happening in the country. I hope uh, we come to our senses mm -hmm. and function as one unit, because the demographics of the nation is changing in such a way, at this time, I am not even thinking of my culture, your culture in that sense. I am seeing that this is the only culture which allows seeking for truth. Mm. Everywhere else, everything mm. is written down, you either believe it or you are dead kind of attitude. Mm. Here, even if God himself comes, we can question him. Where else is it possible that you can question God, you can ask hundred <laughs> questions to God, where else is it possible? Mm. This is the only culture. Mm. So I am saying, for future generations, the only thing, the only and only thing that will be relevant for the world's youth in the… Uh, for all the youth in the world is this Hindu way of life, not as a religion, mm. not as my culture, you must take it, not like that, but as a teaching, as a guidance, there is no other guidance in the world which is universal and inclusive. Let us keep it inclusive and universal, let us not make this you versus me because there is no you versus me. You can worship a stone, I can worship a tree, but both are devotees. Wow. This is the nature of our culture, we must keep it that way. Jeez. Yes, Sadhguruji, uh, hmm. our Indian culture has always said, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, the world is on family mm. <laughs> and therefore nothing is thrust upon anybody. Everybody can have his own way. Now, today we received a light from you mm. that we don't go to the temples just for praying, but we get there, we go there for getting our batteries charged. Mm. This is a new concept at all, totally. And therefore we are grateful and People may abuse or people may say anything, <laughs> but we all are your followers Aww. and what you are doing for this country, 
for this nation and for the humanity hmm. at large is quite necessary today hmm. and we shall try to follow your footsteps definitely the uh, goindgiri ji i am not hmm. talking about abuse as a problem for me hmm. because i am made like this neither somebody is abused nor praised either raises me nor puts me down i am who i am for what i am hmm. that is not the issue but the problem is right now there is an express need in the world as you are doing spreading the gita teaching through, through online for 1 lakh people whatever 1 lakh people is not enough 1 hmm. billion people 5 billion people <laughs> needs to happen yeah. if this needs to happen it is important that we don't get against each other <laughs> and unnecessarily impede the work totally. because in this generation if we don't do it our own youth will lose it mm -hmm. yeah. once our own youth have lost it you can't take it to the rest of the world mm -hmm. we i feel very strongly feel if this spiritual seeking has to live we have a significant responsibility in the next 20 to 25 years if we don't do this work after that it could be very late to revive mm -hmm. that jeez all of us are committed for this cause and we shall take it ahead mm. definitely can you please guide how bhagavad gita can be useful in these days of pandemic for all the people see uh, i am not an expert on the gita as you are uh, <laughs> swami ji but in my understanding whatever you are speaking is gita only <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, what yeah. my being uh, sings within me <laughs> i've uh, unfortunately not spent you know because i got all western educated <laughs> i did not go into the scriptural studies in any way but in my understanding what i see is when you say gita we are not talking about a song that somebody sings we are talking about a song that our soul sings mm. yeah. my body and your body may sing different songs my mind and your mind may sing different songs my emotions and your emotions may sing different songs but my soul and your soul cannot sing different songs mm. <laughs> it sings only one song it's beautiful and mm. in whatever ways they have tried to put it into language because putting this into language is not easy i i personally feel it's almost nearly impossible you can talk around it the real song can never be put into words i think gita is one of those efforts to put that into words in the closest possible <laughs> manner which uh, has come to us through the ages from the time of uh, you know krishna and mahabharat and whatever so in this context what is the most important thing simply means this well krishna is an embodiment of yoga for me hmm. because you can only be playful even when there is life and death situation not just for you for everybody who is dear to you there is life and death situation you are still playful hmm. this is only possible if you are well established in yoga hmm. if you are not well established in yoga life situations will squeeze you life situations will crush you life situations will make you different kind of person in different situations mm -hmm. no matter life or death still you are at ease and you are playful this is only possible if you are deeply rooted in yoga so as far as i am concerned people may see krishna in so many ways mm -hmm. in my experience he is an ultimate yogi yeah. <laughs> that's how i see him hmm. in bhagavad gita also yatra yogeshwara krishna he is not only a yogi but he is yogeshwar he is the highest form of yoga and uh, the way you are guiding people i can uh, when sadguru ji was not there in koyambur i had been uh, in the ashram oh really i'm, I'm sorry yeah, yeah. i didn't know <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i was not there <laughs> uh, and i imparted this to you when we met in uh, ongareshwaram but what i'm saying today is everywhere in every nook and corner of that ashram we saw 
that you have tried to protect our Indian vision, our Indian culture, totally. Mm. This is the great challenge. And the wisdom that has come from ages, it has been not only imparted intellectually, but people are given, the kids are given that atmosphere that so that they can be molded that way. We are trying to do the same thing, Sadhguruji, and therefore we shall require your guidance for our this humble work many a times, not just once. Mm -hmm. Today we are very much grateful to you that you have mm -hmm. given so much of time and showered your grace upon us, but yet we are thirsty. We shall again request some time, <laughs> not take much of your time, but your blessings are required. Even what? though you speak for some minutes, that shall be inspiration for us for years. Hmm. And therefore, <laughs> prostrating myself at your holy feet, <laughs> I again express my gratitude, <laughs> pranam, pranam, and pranam. Yeah. Namaskaram to you, Swamiji. The work that you're doing is very important in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, we are always available, available for you in whatever way possible. The best that we can do, we will do for you. Namaskaram and thank you very much. Namaskaram. Mm. Sadhguruji. At his best. <laughs> oh, I miss him. Hmm. So, oh. this might be my favorite talk that I've ever heard from Sadhguru. I, I, I felt the same. It's oh. just incredible, right? His understanding of the Gita and expressing that, oh. you know, he never really studied it that formal. Oh. Uh, that, that formally, <laughs> right? <laughs> so just his wisdom of being a yogi, right? Mm. You know, and just cutting to the truth of it, that we need to let go of our differences. And it's really a tragic time, you know, for India right now, if we can't turn this around, because we even see it in our comment sections every day that people are arguing and fighting over, you know, superficial trivialities, right? Because we know from Sanatana Dharma that there's many paths, many ways, many traditions, mm. many you know, aspects of the creation and the creator, and we all have our own path and journey. And that's part of the whole of it. <sighs> and we got to embrace and accept and care for each oh. other, you know, no, no, no matter what the path is. And then if we can reignite that, you know, then we can reignite the youth of India to re-embrace mm. it, you know, and, and see how cool it is yeah. and how incredibly amazing that there's different ways yeah. and different paths and different teachings and different gurus and and letting go of you know that attitude that kind of maybe infiltrated you know the consciousness of india from outside sources mm -hmm. perhaps and then just let that go and understand that okay well there's ignorance in the world mm -hmm. And, uh, but we can see the truth and we can see how cool, mm. you know, Hinduism, Sanatana Dharma <laughs> is, that there is so many ways. And that's what I love about it the most. It's mm. like, holy smokes. Mm. So hearing Sadhguru talking with such, you know, Aww. reverence and understanding of mm. Supreme Lord Krishna and knowing that he's got a different way to relate to Krishna. And that's totally great. Mm. And I love that when he said he sees Krishna as the Supreme Yogi, right? Mm. Whereas I see he's Krishna as, you know, God, Supreme Lord Krishna for mm. me. But the fact that, you know, we all know Sadhguru is a Shiva devotee, <laughs> which is totally cool. And I love that about him. And then so him speaking from a different, mm. you know, tradition with such, you know, respect and understanding mm. the purpose and laying it down. Like what oh, was Krishna mm. here to do and what was Krishna here to teach? And then saying some really, really good points about why... Hinduism and Sanatana Dharma is so important, right? Mm. Because what other tradition allows that? He's totally right mm. that what other tradition lets some guy ask a god, yeah. you know, a hundred questions. <laughs> yeah. You're a seeker and I want to know the answer and I'm going to yeah. seek and I'm going to question, you know, instead of just being spoon-fed 
this is what we believe and you have to believe mm-hmm. it too right so we gotta we gotta let go of that but at the same time you know not losing our you know our respect and our love for humanity as a whole so you know even while we're coming out of the pits of ignorance we have to be compassionate for those who are still trapped mm-hmm. within the delusion right so absolutely wonderful uh, talk and uh yeah there, there were lots of tears flowing um mm-hmm. i don't even know exactly why um i think yeah i mean we haven't listened to many teachings because we studied the gita right mm-hmm. so this is almost like it's almost like a commentary right um yeah but also like um you know, because so much is happening during the Gita study, you know, the mind is purifying itself, you know. Oh, yeah. My, I have quite the experience <laughs> and quite, you know, a good time. Yeah. And, uh, but because we study the Gita, we don't receive many teachings, like from, you know, realized mm. beings or, you know, higher level beings. And so this was almost like, I don't know, it felt like different. I mean, you say the talk was different, but I thought like, the transmission, I don't know, it was just different. It went right in, even, mm-hmm. and I just cried. And also just seeing um, mm-hmm. Swami Govinda, his Sweet. humbleness, his sweetness. I was like, yeah. I was melting. Like, yeah. his sweetness melted in me. That it was, was amazing. so beautiful. Yeah, I wasn't expecting Aww. that, too. It's like, it's almost he had devotion for Satguru in a way, even though he's obviously a Krishna devotee and he's, his uh. work is to spread the Gita, right? Where, a Krishna, where Satguru has a different, you know, mission, but they're supporting each other oh, yeah, and they're maybe, respecting yeah. each other, uh, you know, different, different traditions, right? Yeah. So the, yeah, is absolutely beautiful and amazing <sighs> and wonderful. And I get what you're saying too, with just that receptivity. Because it's very different, even though we are reading like the highest teachings, the Bhagavad Gita, the words spoken by Mm -hmm. Supreme Lord Krishna himself, it's different because I'm, of course, not a realized being (laughs) and I'm reading it, right? So then, so maybe that sparks the seeds and the imprints and then Mm -hmm. now, boom, and then Mm -hmm. we have Satguru talking about it, right? Yeah. And then from his realizations and his understanding and then that's like kind of it ignites you know, what we've been studying and then just kind of getting a a better understanding of it, right? Mm, So That was a real treat. I'm done for that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but absolutely my favorite part because I see it too, and this has come into my consciousness, you know, a while ago just with Mm. having this YouTube channel was realizing that, you know, the youth of India right now, Mm. very distracted, right, with other things going on and like, Part of, I think, our journey is to help inspire the youth of India to realize how cool spirituality Mm -hmm. is. Because if you're not spiritual, then in a way, you're just kind of asking for trouble because this is samsara (laughs) and it is suffering and there is a way out and we need to embrace that, which is why we do have some very young people (gasps) watching us. And even in our our members, some of our members are very, very young. 20, 23, 27. so inspiring, right? So, yeah, these guys and other youth, right? that are being touched, mm. you know, by Swami Govinda and his mission to get the Gita out. It sounds like they're reaching a lot mm. of youth. And it's so great and it's so amazing and it's so wonderful because what really struck me in this video when Sakura was talking about the temples and, uh, you know, how so many temples, they're not even, nobody's even mm. going to them, right? And they're not even being maintained. And, like, I can just imagine and you know, 20 to 30 years, like what he was talking about, to reignite the spirituality of India and having all of these temples, Mm -hmm. you know, full of devotion once more with flowers and Mm -hmm. candles and incense and offerings and Mm -hmm. pujas. And yeah, that would be amazing, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because we've been to India and that's what I was expecting. (laughs) And I pray in my heart that it can be like that once again. So, mm. yeah. Thank you so much for watching this with us. This was wonderful. Amazing. Mm. 
So uh, yeah, let us know what you love most about this uh, video. Um, yeah, and then uh, hit the like button. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already. And the most important thing is to raise yourself. And raise the world. Thank you so much, everyone. And a very special thank you to all our members. We love you. Peace.